Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is going to be a fun show. It's Tony Martirano, who's director of corporate development at Carl Springs Auto Mall. You know, the auto mall that takes up like three, four blocks over there in Carl Springs, right off university. It's a great place. But um, so Tony is very smart and he understands so much about cars. He teaches classes. I mean, he's the big guy over there. And so he was on our show not too long ago with Megan and I just invited them back. So Megan wasn't available. So he said, OK, Tony, you do it. So here he is, and welcome to our show, Tony. Thanks for having me, Anita. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You are just, you're quite a spirit. Were you like this when you were a young kid? Um, no, I was actually very shy when I was a young kid. But no. you know they say? There's nothing worse than a reformed anything. <laughs> well, you couldn't have been shy. You were just waiting. You were storing it all up, right? I was watching and learning. Watching and learning. Okay, so if someone asked you what your profession is, what would you answer? Well, I started. I started my career many years ago. In the, uh, I worked as a high school teacher at, at Boca High School, and um, that lasted a short period of time before I got into the automobile business. and And I continued to teach. I used to teach customers, and that went on to teaching salespeople and managers. And I feel like I've been teaching for the last thirty years. Um, my my big my profession right now is I hire, train, maintain, and motivate our sales and management staff at Coral Springs Auto Mall. And at Ken Page Auto Group, which is, consists of 17 dealerships up and down the east coast of the United States, owned by a gentleman from Boca Raton named Kenneth Page. Well, it's a big responsibility, and I'm glad that you're doing that, because the one thing that people have always talked about, people in the car business, is <clears throat> they wish that they had to deal with people who were nicer, not not the way they are. It has never really been the greatest profession because now I know fantastic guys in this profession, but a lot of people uh, are hiring people that really aren't fit to be in it. Right. You know, we try we try to take very good care of customers. We try to provide exceptional customer service. And it's very tough in our business because it's a negotiating business. And um, it's a lot different. When I, go, when I go to a restaurant and I sit down and I eat a steak, I know that everybody that's eating the same steak as me is paying the same price as I am. But this is the type of business where nobody pays full list for the steak, and everybody wants some kind of discount. So it's, it's a very tough profession because we start off kind of against each other right from the beginning hmm. because we know we're gonna, and it's going to come down to not only what's, what the customer perceives as the best product, but also what they perceive the best price is also. You know, Tony, I must be weird because when I buy a car, I usually don't do that. I just, whatever they say, and I'll say, well, can I have this or that? And they'll say yes or no. And I buy it, and I guess that's not what everybody does. Well, these days, um, it's harder than ever before to be in sales, especially automobile sales, because customers come in and they're armed with a lot of information. Um, they know a lot about the cars because they've been reading about them online. They know what price they should have to pay because there are, there are, uh, there are websites like True Car and Kelly Blue Book and, um, and, and websites like that. They'll tell you what the dealers pay for the car. So... Customers know our car is better than we know our cars, and they know what to pay for our cars also. So they're pretty sharp, and they're very well educated. Well, so you have, let, let's just talk a little bit about what's there <clears throat> at the Carl Springs Auto Mall, because that's the one we're talking about now. So why don't you go over the different car dealerships and, <clears throat> and maybe talk about the differences, in your opinion, for all these cars? Um, we, saw, we saw Hondas, which is, a, which... They kind of sell themselves. Everybody knows a Honda is a good product. They know they never break. And we also sell Nissan, same same type of reputation. Um, more of the Chevrolet of of, uh, of import cars. They have the whole line of vehicles, everything from sports cars, from hundred thousand dollar sports cars to big trucks. Uh, we sell Buick, GMC, which is really now very upscale. They compete with Lexus and Mercedes. And we also have uh, our newest line is the Kia, the Kia line, and everybody knows the Korean models have been doing very, very well lately. Um, the one thing that we have going for us at the Auto Mall is that our customers are unbelievably internet savvy. Um, our, our manufacturers get some of the most amount of hits out of all the manufacturers when it comes to people doing research on vehicles. So I can tell you that our customers are very educated, they're very intelligent, and they're very tech savvy. And so. That means that 
the people who you hire has to, they they have to appreciate what the, the people, public the people knows. I, the people I hire today also have to be tech savvy. They also have have to have a lot more knowledge when it comes to computers because we're getting a lot more emails and customers are looking for more information online. Uh, not only are they looking for written information, customers like videos, so we do videos to send to our customers. And there's a lot of communication that goes on between our sales force and our customers before the customer ever sets foot into the dealership. And you know, when a, cust- when a customer is looking at a specific type of vehicle and they've had the time to do their homework, they start to know the vehicle very, very well, sometimes almost better than us because we might have 60 or 70 different models we need to know. Well, that particular customer has, has it narrowed down to one model, and he's been reading about that for the past two weeks. So we work really, really hard on our product knowledge. All of my salespeople are certified. They go through a rigorous certification program to make sure, and they, they will not handle a customer until they are completely certified in the vehicles that they're selling. But that doesn't stop the customers from knowing a couple of more things about the vehicle than they do, because, like I said, they're not, my salespeople are not selling that specific vehicle every single day, and the customer is very knowledgeable when it comes to those vehicles. Well, that's very well said, and I think that's important. But isn't it true that someone comes in with that in their mind, and when they start looking around and they see this convertible that's red and it maybe it's a different model than when they thought, and then there's something else turns their head. So it's kind of like I used to sell houses. I was in the real estate business, and everyone wanted a certain house. They knew it. They came in. That's what they wanted until they saw this other one. And that's right. what they bought. Does that happen in the car business? Well, the car business, you've, you've uh, talked about the differences between something being logical and something being an emotion. <laughs> right. And um, customers come in and it's a, buying a car is a very emotional thing. In fact, you said it well. The majority of customers come in and buy something other than what they thought they were going to buy. <laughs> and, and, and it may not be completely different, Anita, but it might be a different color. And they might, they might have thought they didn't want a sunroof, but once they saw the sunroof, they wanted that because they become emotionally, they become emotionally involved. It's, it's exciting. Automobiles are exciting to us. The Amer- Americans are still in love with their vehicles, and we love to drive. And we get here, and we think we want a certain color, and then we see that color, and we see another color next to it, and we realize that <laughs> that may be a little bit prettier to us. So, you know, a lot of times when we're working with customers over the phone, when they come in in person, all of that work goes out the window, because now we're on a totally different vehicle. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And, it, and it's because it's really hard to fall in love with something or somebody over the telephone. When you see it in person and you can see it and touch <laughs> it and smell it and drive it, um, oh my gosh. There's, just, there's just an emotional involvement. That's great. Well said, Tony. I love the way that you put that. That's right. It's hard to fall in love with someone over the telephone. It's a good beginning, as you would say. But Tony right. Mar does... Tony Martirano, who's Director of Corporate Development. Carl Springs Auto Mall is our guest. I'm Anita Finley, and we're talking about cars. Of course, the Carl Springs Auto Mall uh, is really the place to go. Don't buy a car somewhere else. Go there, look and see what they have. Get online, carlspringsautomall.com, and you'll be able to see a lot of the uh, what's, what the cars look like. The Buick, oh, that Buick is gorgeous. I couldn't even believe when I saw it. The Honda, the Kia, the Nissan. And um, what I forget, the GMC? Yeah, GMC. Yeah, yeah GMC. Anyway, I, I have to say that it's a, a great way. And, and I have noticed when I walked in there, I've been there for a few different things, and people, they don't run up to you like, oh, my gosh, they're going to kill me. As you go to someplace dealerships, it's like they're right. all after you. No, very nice, very gentle. Is there something I can do to help you? And, I mean, it's, it's, they have been trained, and you will feel that. And I think that's a good beginning. I wish all car dealerships were like that. But, so you should have an edge on it. But what I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of confusion, I was just talking with someone here at the radio station, and he has a, I don't know what kind of a car, but it has 100,000 miles. And it's very good. It's doing well. He said, I'm thinking about, about buying a new car. I said, why? He said, I don't know. I said, he said, maybe I should have a new one. I said, well, isn't it working? Yes. And I'm wondering why, and I think he, he doesn't owe any money on it. So why is he going to do that? Well, I think, I think buying a car is, a, is an individual. People buy cars for a lot of different reasons. Um, and the, the, one, the only reason is not just transportation. Some people buy a car because 
they feel like they want something new. It makes them feel better. Maybe they're celebrating something in their life. Maybe they, maybe they buy it to make them feel better at that particular time because things are not going well. Mm-hmm. It's hard to really say when it comes to... It's an individual thing as to when to buy a new car. Some people like to buy a new car before they spend any money on their old car. Some people come into me and they say, Tony, I wish I would have traded this car in before I spent $3,500 on it. But I always tell people if the car is running well and you're not spending money on the car... Um, it's probably worth a lot more to you than it is to worth, it's worth to someone else. But like I said, um, we have a, we, last month we sold about 1,000 new cars here at Coral Springs Automobile. In fact, over 1,000 new cars. Mm. And not all 1,000 of those people actually needed a new car. But I can tell you, most of those 1,000 wanted a new car. And for whatever reason, whatever individual reason that they had, they felt at that time that like, they wanted to get a new car. Some people needed tires. And they bought a new car. Some, <laughs> right. people's, some people's cars were getting old, and they bought a new car. And some people got a raise at work, and they felt like they deserved a new car. So like I said, those reasons right. are as individual as, as the person is that's coming in. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. So can you tell about people from the color of the car they buy? What color car do you think I, I would buy? <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Forget it. Oh, you don't that's have to a say really, that's a really Don't good say question. it. You don't say it. Don't say I it. Think that, I think that you're a white person. White color because you're a white horse type of person. You would ride up on a white horse. You're so sweet. How about a red horse? A red horse. I'm a red person, Tony. I heard a, I heard a husband um, um, tell his wife the other day the reason you want that red, that red car is Uh-oh. because you're crying for attention. <laughs> but, but I don't believe that. I don't really believe that. I just heard, like I said, I'm not really sure why pi- people buy different colors. Um I just recently, I just went from a silver car to a white car. Don't ask me why. White horse, because you like to be a white horse. I'll tell you, let me tell you why I buy a red car, which is strange. Uh, I guess I was about 22, and I was working for an engineering firm as a secretary. And the engineer, who I thought was brilliant, he always had a red car. And I asked him why. He said, because people will see me coming and have less chance of being in an accident. And I've always bought a red car. Wow. Isn't that funny? Now, whether that's true, I, I'm sure the insurance industry probably has some data on that. I'm not really sure if they do or they don't, but it sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, it does sound interesting. I don't know. I mean, and it's funny when, when you, when when at night, at night, I am seen better than black cars. What's happened now? It seems like everybody wants a black car. I don't know why. Well, because they look nice. They're also very tough to keep clean, but they look very yeah, nice when, when they when are they're clean. clean. You're right. They're like a yep. li- limousine. You don't see any. Mm-hmm. We see no red limousines. That's something, isn't it? <laughs> you know, people. Uh, a lot of people don't like black cars because they think it's too hot in the South Florida sun. But I can honestly tell you that no matter whether you buy a white car or a black car, they're both very hot in the South Florida sure. sun. Sure. And, they bo- and today, air conditioners are so good, they'll both cool off in five to ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. It's not a big problem. Well, I want to get back to, uh, I want to really get back to the, um, the, the Buick. And, and I know I see that commercial. It was funny. The first time you see it, and this older woman says, that's not a com- Buick. <laughs> right. And I, I saw a Buick the other day. It's gorgeous. I mean. Yeah, they're beautiful cars. Pff, looks like, a, you know, one of those, I don't even want to use the name, but, you know, one of the ones that cost like $200,000. Right. So. Yeah, like um, I said, that's probably our most, um, we, have a, like a, we have a Honda building, we have a Nissan building, we have a Kia building, and then in a separate building we have GMC and Buick, and that's probably our most upscale customers. Uh-huh. And I can say, I'll say some of the names for you. The customers that shop those cars also look at Mercedes and Lexus and BMW because they kind of compete with each other. Really? And, uh, we have a little bit of edge. We have a little bit of an edge when it comes to price. And uh, I don't know if you saw the, the latest quality uh, quality figures, but we're doing really, really well when it comes to quality. We're beating some of the uh, more expensive imports when it comes to quality. The problem is that people don't really know that yet. And I can also tell you that Buick is a very, very popular car in China. So, really? So General, General Motors is selling a lot of Buicks in China. Huh. Well, that's a, that's a, a new one. I had not read that, but but it's true. And I do like to buy a Mer- You know, I think that's a very good thing to report. But the Buick, now I have another big question. Do you, as a, um, as a brand new auto dealer... Do you spray stuff into the car that makes the leather smell so good when you get into a new car? How did this, what is that leather? What's going on with this? I don't know. I don't know what the manufacturer smells puts in the car to make it smell that good, but we don't put anything in it. That's just the smell of a new car. 
like I said, I got a new car a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's, it's in there right now. I love the smell. <laughs> It'll probably last about six months before it smells like my cologne and, and my Labrador Retriever. Uh, but I, I'm not sure. They all come like that. They all come that. They all come with that smell in it. And each manufacturer um, has their own distinct. I could tell the difference between a Kia and a Honda. They all smell new, but a little bit of a different type of new. So really. Uh, and by the way, on our used cars. People think that we spray our used cars to smell new, but we, we don't. We don't really spray our used cars with anything except whatever it takes to clean them and make huh. them look brand brand new again. And, and you talked about leather. Do all car, are all cars leather, or are they naugahyde, or what? What is it inside? Some cars are cloth. Some cl- some cars are vinyl. Huh, that's and what I meant. Some cars are leather, and what the, the one that people are uh, asked for the most is whatever they prefer. Some people prefer sitting on leather. Some people prefer sitting on cloth. People say that the leather is the most durable of all of them. So people who keep a car a long time tend to gravitate towards leather. Some people buy leather, and they cover them with cloth seat covers. Hmm. Some people buy cloth seat covers, and they cover them with leather seat covers. So, again, a lot of individuality when it comes to selecting a vehicle, and there's a lot, there's a lot of different ways to skin that new car cat. It's true. Now, there are when you sell a new car... Is it pretty much stripped, and then you start adding on things, or some cars come with a lot of things? I mean, how does that work? Well, um, people used to order cars many, many years ago. When my dad was buying cars in the 50s, people would order cars the way they want, and they'd wait a couple weeks, and the car would come in. Today, the cars are shipped, and most of them are loaded. When I say loaded, power windows, power locks, uh, you know, sunroofs, air conditioners, uh, most cars come with things, they're, they're pretty well loaded. The only thing that's added on, that could be added on at the factory today, are technology type things like Bluetooth and backup camera and navigation systems. And some people want um, video systems in their cars so their children can watch videos in the back. Uh, but most cars are loaded. You know, it's hard to really, we, as a dealer, we don't put anything on the cars anymore. The manufacturer ships us the cars, and they say, here are your cars for the 30, next 30 days. Sell them. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, because okay. it's true. But let's get back to the sunroof. I have had a sunroof, and mm-hmm. I don't remember once or twice when I actually opened it up because mm-hmm. it makes a very loud sound when I'm driving, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. What, what am I supposed to do with that sunroof? I don't know, just what are you supposed <laughs> to do with the sunroof? You're supposed to uh, you're supposed to open the sunroof and yeah. enjoy the sunroof and let the wind blow through your hair. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> unless, unless you're unless you're a guy like me and I let the wind blow through my bald head. <laughs> but like yourself, but like yourself, when I have a car with sunroof, yeah. I don't really use it that often. Right. Um, and I have I don't know why. I just I'm just not a, I just don't use the sunroof that often. And I have I have uh, other people that tell me that they use the sunroof all the time. I I, I will t- I, I will tell you that taller people tend to not like a sunroof because ah. the sunroof will, sunroof will take away three or four inches of headroom <gasps> that a six foot five or six foot seven foot person actually needs to be more comfortable in the vehicle. So a sunroof has a thicker roof that takes away headroom, headroom, headroom from the driver. And um, so taller people tend to stay away from sunroofs. Um, you know, outdoorsy people tend to like sunroofs. Um, I tend to, I rarely use my sunroof when I have one on a vehicle. Sometimes the vehicle will come with it, and I'll just buy it with it, but I don't open it that often. Exactly. That's what's happened with me. I've been buying it. just comes with it because I would never pay for it, but you're right. And I, there are two parts to it. You know, there's the part you pull back, and then it'll let some light in. But, of course, mm-hmm. it's too hot, so you're not going to do it. And at night, it really doesn't make a difference. And when I opened it, it, it the wind kind of made – it was loud sound. I didn't like it. Right. Well, by the way, in case you do have a sunroof yeah. and you're having that type of, that sounds called buffeting. That's when the wind's coming in there and it's got no place to go. Yeah. They actually sell a sunroof visor that goes over the front of the sunroof. So it directs the air up over the sunroof so it doesn't come into the car. It's about a $100 dealer option. It's a piece of plastic. And as huh. I said, it just goes over the front of the sunroof and it keeps the air from coming straight down into the car. And it kind of it directs it over the roof of the vehicle. See, so that's been a common, <clears throat> well... I, I, I don't know anybody's learned more about cars than I have in this short time. I mean, you really do know a lot. So when a new car comes on the market, let's say the Buick, the, they, they redesigned the Buick, how do you learn 
what you learn about the Buick? Well, we get, um, Buick sends us videos, and all my, my salespeople and my managers have to watch the videos and take a test. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's a series of seven or eight videos. So mm-hmm. it's seven or eight videos and a test, and seven or eight videos and a test. They have to pass all the tests before, they, before they're able to go back down on the floor and sell that vehicle. It's called, be, it's called being certified in every manufacturer. It's not just the cars that we sell, whether it's Toyota or Mercedes or any other dealership that's out there. Every manufacturer has a certification process these days, and uh, they require their salespeople to go through them. They actually bonus their salespeople for getting through those certification classes. Well, Tony, <clears throat> let me just tell everybody again. Tony Martirano, who's Director of Corporate Development, Carl Springs Auto Mall, is telling us so much. I'm Anita Finley, and you've been listening to the Boomer Time Show. But just, Tony, this makes, I think, all our listeners think and know that the people, at least at Carl, Auto, Carl Springs Auto Mall, they're pretty intelligent. They're pretty with it because that's a lot of information. You're telling me that there are five different car dealerships there, and they have to know everything, and every car isn't the same. Even if it is a Buick, they must have many models, and some of the models have different things. That's a lot for someone to learn. Well, well what happens is most of the guys learn the uh, the product that's specific to their dealership. For instance, if I'm a Honda, if I'm a Honda salesperson, I learn Honda. And if, and if you're a Nissan salesperson, you learn Nissan. Sometimes our customers want me as a Honda salesperson to sell them a Nissan, and I will. Sometimes they prefer to speak to a salesperson that has more knowledge on that particular product. In that particular case, that Honda salesperson will hand that customer over to a Nissan salesperson that knows more about the vehicle. So it's up to the customer. If the customer wants to work with me, I can work with them on any car. If they would like somebody that's more knowledgeable on the type of car that they're, that they're driving, then we're able to do that also. So, again, we try to please the customer. And, of course, we can't exceed their expectations unless we know what their expectations are. So we ask, and that's, that's how we decide how we're going to handle that particular customer. That makes a lot of sense to me. And so there, uh, you, you certainly hit the the nail on the head because people um, they may come in for a particular car and if the salesperson is really good they fall in love pardon the expression with a salesperson and they will Mm -hmm. trust that salesperson and and i'm sure that that salesperson then has i'm gonna use the word control over what they buy based on what they really think is good for that person compared to someone who may be very very smart but has Mm -hmm. no not much personalities not paying attention and, of course, if you know that, you're not going to hire them and you're not going to train them, but sometimes people right. slip by, I guess. Well, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, you always know, sometimes I hire someone that turns out to be, uh, he may not be a great salesperson. I thought he, I thought he was a nice person and turned out to be not so great a salesperson uh, because he's not dedicated to his profession. And I can't measure that beforehand. If I could, I'd be a multimillionaire. <laughs> but anyway, there are times when customers want to speak to someone from my Honda dealership but they want to buy a Nissan. And a lot of times my Honda guy will go over, and they have partners over at their other stores mm. that help out. So if you came in and you want to know more about the vehicle than I actually knew at that particular time, I might have a friend over at Nissan that will come over and give us the information that I might not have. You know, I have a small, I have a small fortune from a fortune cookie that I keep in my wallet, Anita, and it says, a wise man knows everything, but a shrewd man knows everybody. I would oh, prefer to know everybody. I, I would love prefer to know everybody. And, and by the way, it's all and it's all about relationships. It's about our relationship with the customer, and it's also about our salespeople's relationship with each other. And you know, it's a relationship. Like I've learned a lot about you now since you've been on the show and all. And if I were to go out now and buy another car, um, and I were thinking of some of the dealers, some of the cars you have. I'm going to go to your dealership. It's because I now have a relationship. I feel like I know you and I know what's going on there. I know Meg- Megan. I, it's true. That's how it works because you can see ads all you want and you can hear things on the radio, all these commercials. But if you don't know someone, uh, it's going to be harder I mean, because there's so many dealerships that are selling the same car. So it that's isn't correct. that, right? It's, it's who? That's correct. Yeah. You know. You know, I have relationships. Um, I have relationships with other dealers also. I have friends of mine that want to buy Toyotas, and I happen to be a dear friend of Al Hendrickson, who owns the Toyota dealership in Coconut Creek. And it's nice to know that I can send my friends to someone who I have a relationship with also. So we have. Re- so again, 
a lot of a lot of things in this life. And, you know, I, I'm not naive enough to think I could sell everybody one of the vehicles that we have here. But it's not. But I think that our business is about relationships, and I think that people buy cars from people they like and people they trust. So we work on those issues. And don't get me wrong, we don't get it right 100% of the time. When you're dealing with a couple of hundred thousand customers a year, you're going to make some people not not so happy with the whole process. Like I said, we try, and we're constantly refining the process to be better customer-focused. Do we fall short sometimes? Absolutely, because dealing with people is not the easiest thing in the world. So you know? Yeah, but you said something about the Internet. So the Internet is just an introduction. Are there people who actually will buy a car on an Internet and never see it until it's delivered? What happens is people will, will email, us, email us, and we email them back. And then, of course, the emails turn into a phone call. And the phone call sometimes turns into an appointment. And when the appointment finally shows up, they have a relationship with that person that they've been emailing and talking to on the telephone. And you're asking me, do sometimes people, do they buy a, a car on, a, on the telephone? Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes they never come in, and the day that they come in, they come in just to pick it up. But you mentioned earlier, and sometimes this happened, happens, we, we arrived at the car, we arrived at the color, we arrived at the sunroof, we arrived at the price, the customer comes in here to pick up the car, and it turns out he sees another car that he likes a little bit better. That happens often because emotions are involved. People say, oh, I like that color better than the color that I picked. So um, everything that we did on the phone and on the internet to that point kind of goes out the window. We're kind of starting over at that particular hmm. point. But I will tell you that people do get a lot of information. They call in. Um, they get a lot of information online, uh, over the Internet, and on the telephone. And then at, from there, it goes to an appointment. Um, I have an Internet department that deals with people on the Internet that has grown from one person to about 40 people in the last 10 years. You are not – I. oh, that now that says a lot. That's all you have to say, and I guess we've run out of time. But, Tony, that is – that's an amazing way to end this show, 1 to 40. So as the Internet is here to stay. It's obvious. But I'd still like to deal with you rather than the Internet. So. And, and by the way, your <laughs> listeners can feel free to email me anytime, anytime they'd like at the automobile. They could call the operator here at the automobile, and they'll give you my email address. And they could feel – I'll answer their questions with, without feeling, them feeling any pressure whatsoever. Um, and, they could get, and without dealing with the salesperson, I don't sell cars. I hire and train salespeople. I helped run the auto mall, uh, but I'll be happy to answer their questions before we ever get to speak to any salesperson. Thank so I'll you. Offer you that's, I'll offer that to your listeners. That's wonderful. So the phone number to call is 1-800-353-8660, 1-800-353-8660. Mm-hmm. Or carlspringsautomall.com. Or what is your email address? Um, it's a long one. That's why I asked you oh, to call the operator. Yeah, let's just call. It's, it's, You're right. Let's it, not do that. The, the, it's, it's silly. They won't get it. Spelling that long Sicilian last name is it's not any it's not an easy thing. <laughs> okay, um, thanks. But, but the Tony. operator the operator will happily okay. direct the customer to me. Thanks, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.